logos for the Children's Bureau, and the Capacity Building Center for States. Becoming a Family-Focused System, One Agency's Story, Episode 3, Supporting Family and Kin. Animated characters discuss some of the challenges and successes at their agency. I was telling you that our improvement work group was tracking the success of the peer support for parents. It wasn't just parents that need support, so we brought our data and strategies to leadership, and they were on board to pilot a new program for peer support to kinship caregivers and resource parents too. Here's Stephen. He's the kinship navigator on our work group. Stephen, why don't you tell them a little about what you do and what our team is doing? Hi, Francie. As you know, I got hired to be a kinship navigator, like Rosa. I was asked to join the work group about six months ago to share my perspective. A while back, I had my grandchildren while my son and his wife went through a rough time. It wasn't easy, but we got through it. Now I help new kinship caregivers navigate the system to get what they need so they can take care of their family's children. Kin caregivers get a phone call and all of a sudden have to deal with heartbreak, changing roles, and a lot of new responsibilities. I talk with them about how hard this situation can be and help them deal with it. I walk them through the steps to getting licensed and foster parents and help them understand the court system, what everybody's role is, and help them find resources that the kids need. Just yesterday, I helped a family connect with mental health services for one of their kids and summer camp for both grandchildren. I think they're glad to have the support. I try to help the Improvement Work Group see it from the kinship caregiver's perspective. Kin can bring so much stability to the children's lives, and they need support like respite care, just like traditional foster parents. Our work group looks at what gets in the way of that happening. We have to have those honest conversations with staff to bust the belief that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Just like Rosa and I have a voice at the work group table to help make plans to improve our agency. Both of us work with parents and kin so their voices are heard too. When decisions and plans are being made about their families, they've got to be part of the team. We make sure they know how to communicate and plan with caseworkers and resource families and that they understand what to expect from court hearings. When there's a family meeting, we help them get ready by asking the family what they want to get out of it rather than telling them what to do. Rosa works with parents. I work with relatives and fictive kin. We both partner with caseworkers to help parents and families get the support they need to make changes and get their kids back sooner. And we help them have better relationships with resource parents with icebreaker meetings. Once the family and resource parents meet each other, they figure out everybody wants the best for their kids. Then the ice starts the thaw, and you can see the trust begin to grow. We know resource parents who became friends with the whole extended family long after we close the case. They're still going to the kids' birthday parties and graduations. Things are changing. Some people have been here a long time, and I'm not sure what everybody thinks about us, but it seems like a lot of the staff like having us around. Absolutely. Our staff surveys are showing changing attitudes, and we've seen a lot of positive feedback about you and Rosa. Just like we use outcome data to see if we are on track, gathering feedback on an ongoing basis from staff and stakeholders makes us more flexible and able to adapt to their changing needs. It's not enough to simply have a mission statement. Agencies, families, and service providers must work together to make sure that our agency is what we expect and what our families need. I bet our agency isn't so different from yours. How can you increase participation in work groups? Whose perspective might be valuable to have? How can you help work group members contribute to conversations? How can your agency be more respectful to families? How can you gather data to show that families are receiving needed services from providers? How can you gather data to inform and track change? And let's not forget about our court partners. 
Next time, I'll introduce you to Joe, the Court Improvement Program Lead on our Program Improvement Team. He'll talk to you about how we've been coordinating changes with the court system. This video was created by the Capacity Building Center for States and funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Children's Bureau, under contract number HHSP 2332-0140-0033C.